Well, guys. Oh, I'm here. What's going on, Nate? How are things doing? Probably you guys likely have better things to do on a Friday than, say, be here. But since I don't have anything better to do, I figured I'd see you go live, see how many people show up. Um, I know it's like Mondays, Monday through Thursday is like the best time, but hey, whatever. I got uh, the boat, more or less turf, with the exception of a few spots. I had hoped to have the whole thing done, but, you know, whatever. So let's go ahead and take a look at it. And let's hope that more than one person shows up to this live besides Nate. Well, Nate, what do you think? Hey, what's going on, Dominic? How are you? Hey, I sent you guys this package today. It's all... It's all done. So, more or less, obviously I wanted to show you what we got done here, but I wanted to also talk to you guys all about like the process and how we got it all straight, how many sheets this took, some of the tricks on how to put the latches flush without actually cutting the whole thing out, what kind of latches we used, why we foamed the inside, like all these other things we wanted to talk about. All right, guys, 23 in the live. Thank you guys for showing up. I know you guys have better things to do on your Friday, but you're here. And so I really appreciate that. Uh, can I get 23 likes since there's 23 of you guys in here? Just go ahead and hit that like button, pop out of the chat, hit it, come back in. Give us your comment. Nate is in here. If Chris shows up, uh, Chris, is, Chris is probably doing like not great things on a Friday night. But um, Nate is here to answer any questions. So live Q&A always at these, at these lives. I my, my guys are always in the in the comment section, which is thank heaven because I always run these from my phone and it's super hard to go through the chat with my fingers. Looks stupid doing it. So Nate's here to answer any and all questions. Nate is the original person who more or less taught us how to do this. I just recorded it and then used it for my own personal gain. And now we got this boat. So here, let's check this out. This is what we got going on. So this is our TBN dark camo. So I tagged the camos or the hydro turf in like this this live. I think you can see it if you if you view it. it's like right there in the bottom left hand corner. But this is okay. So this is the gray, and this is partial of a sheet that I started using because remember I had to I had to do the front like a long time ago, and then bend the front, kind of groove it, and then I uh, I got one full sheet left. I said five sheets. Had five sheets. I thought it would take five. It actually only took three. Actually two and a half. Well, by the time we're done with the gunnels, I think it'll be very close to three. But essentially, this is camo cut groove. So let me talk about this. There are levels to the foam game. So when we initially saw EBA foam and you saw teak, and if you ever got the teak deck, you understand you can scratch that stuff. Like if you rub something wrong the wrong way, you scratch the teak and it looks that way forever. I didn't have a really high opinion of EVA foam. I was the first one to self route my deck and post it on YouTube. And that was with self routing EVA foam from Amazon. And the stuff was just, I was just, it looked great at first. All EVA foam looks great at first. It's after time performance wise, I was not very impressed. And I would like constantly like berate EVA foam and belittle it and talk negatively about it and how it's not as durable as carbon. It just looks good. And then you got all these people coming on here. Mike, no, you got it wrong. The hydro turf is, is so durable. I can pressure wash it. I drag my gear, my hunting gear and blood and guts and every, and, not, and then nothing ever happens to it. Like what you're saying. So, so, I mean, I listen to you guys. If enough, if enough people say that I start to listen, not just one sporadic hater every once in a while, but if there's a correlation of people you had to, you had to start listening to correlations because something's there. And so, Go ahead and you try it. It turns out the stuff has UV inhibitors in it. And however they make it, it may not be the most comfortable foam to sit on, although it is foam, so it's still comfortable. But it is very durable. It is it has withstood a summer out here. Like one of the hottest summers ever record in Havasu, which is like 120 degree plus for like a month straight. Um, didn't degrade, didn't start flaking or powdering like the stuff on Amazon. Um, held it together. And then I more or less have never cleaned that deck. I mean, the budget build, remember that's the first one I ever actually really truly used HydroTurf, and that was like the Gator Cam. And I'll tell you, I've never had to clean that deck. Not once. It looks fabulous. Like all the time. Of course, it's Gator Cam, so you really don't have to clean it anyways. But even if I did, this stuff I might have to clean. 
Although maybe not. And then obviously I, I did the other 1648 John boat with the TBN light camo, which is like this, but it has lighter shades of gray in with the darker shades of gray. And it actually looks really good too. Stuff kind of grew on me. I still think this color is a little bit more rugged and awesome. It's going to take abuse a little bit more without getting dirty because those light shades of gray do get dirty. The white, the white in that, in that hydro turf does get dirty. So if you get one of those flashy colors, like the blue, red, or lime green camo or the snow cam, then yeah, the, the white does get dirty in it, but Maybe Hydroturf will change that in a while. Maybe they'll put it to light gray. Light gray does hold up a little bit better. And um, what new one has better images? Uh, yeah, um, yeah, Damon, we heard of him. Uh, he's just another guy out there floating around doing his thing. That's all. You can't do nothing about people. Zero things. We can only do what we do. And we can only move forward. And he's that guy's just got to do what he's got to do, I guess. And he can say whatever he wants. And uh, roughly, for those guys, we've always had haters flow through at this channel. Ever since its creation, always. They come in waves. And it's always tradesmen who don't like what we do and have something to say about it. And they come and they go. He's just another one. That's it. That's it. And uh, hopefully he finds success and he finds other things to keep himself busy uh besides obviously trolling us or our affiliates so wish them the best truly truly and that's the last we'll talk about that guy evermore so let's go back to the hydro turf so anyways this stuff it truly is really really robust really rugged very hard to scratch even if you try to scratch it you can cut this thing up in bunches of pieces of puzzle put it back together and because it's broken up in camel patterns it will look the same more or less if you smush it together much of this is all this is actually three sheets it looks like one sheet but can you tell you can't tell unless i didn't seam it together right or it's stretched you can tell right there dang it stupid piece all right it's too late i'll, I'll have to do i'll just I'll, I'll just have to take that l but the rest of it can you tell these are all pieces broken together all pieces and some of these are pieces i cut out initially i have the whole thing look i got like three cameras going i have three cameras going i got extensive video footage of all of it obviously this is a little different this is actually our new company um it's been around actually for a while but we just we acquired it through a friend of ours this is the john yacht and he makes really cool apparel and these bump boards and i really wanted to put these on the side of the gunnel but then i was thinking it wasn't going to work right because that gray is not quite that gray but you can tell that gray is very similar to this gray because it's both hydroturf, but this gray was slightly different, slightly lighter, and it was going to take blending this thing in a little bit better. So it didn't look so loud against the dull gray. And so we integrated these and in right into the deck. And that's another thing. You can actually just do that. You can self-route or put bump boards, put pre-routed bump boards. We're probably going to get TV Nation logos routed like this. You can stick them right in the hydroturf, right in there. So it'll give you guys a taste of like routed turf action while still having the robust, rugged, true outdoorsman look like this is a big thing. Hey guys, 40 people on this live. Can I get 40 likes, please? I really appreciate it. Thank you much. That would just possibly even get 80 people in the chat if we got 40 likes. The more likes, the more people seem to pile, kind of pile up in here, but I'm glad 40 people is what our usual. It's a pretty good turnout for Friday. All right, let's go. Um, so we... So we started, obviously we started lining it up here. We lined it up here a long time ago because we had to add all this nonsense on here. And so this had to go on. Then I, we have these finishing pieces and I, and, and then we also, we leave an overhang. I'll talk about the overhang, but if you can, if you, if you butted your, your, your wall up and it's a perfect 90 degree angle like this and you don't have an overhang or a finishing piece, that we have for turf um this works pretty well too actually this is already pre-molded front i didn't do this i could have added a lip onto it but i was like that's why this is gonna be a whole lot more work but you can just very 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 tactfully cut and layer it on top of each other it looks pretty freaking phenomenal so if you didn't seam it over you can do that what you don't want to do is fold it over it causes you all kinds of problems and it looks like crap let me talk about what we use to actually cut this you know, all those Harbor Freight, you're like in the Harbor Freight checkout aisle and there's these like dollar utility knives. It's all I use. Those are actually the best knives. I swear to you that and a painter's tool. It's all we put this together with. 
Oh yeah, and we used we used rubbing alcohol to clean the deck. We used actually actually used this stuff. This was water vinegar mix. Now I don't know what for whatever reason water vinegar mix gets things off of the aluminum that nothing else will, but it doesn't necessarily get all the grease and some of the other contaminants that alcohol will. So I always like to hit it with water vinegar mix right on raw aluminum and even on your like paint job of your boat, it'll take water spots right off. I like to hit it with that so the aluminum is the cleanest it's gonna get without really trying to decontaminate it and then I go over it with alcohol. That way that you're not smearing contaminants. And that's gonna be, you really want a good stick to the hydroturf. Now the hydroturf adhesive is so sticky, it'll stick right to the bare floor of my garage. And there's proof of this here in my garage, I hate that. It's like hard to get up, but it will. It's that good. But I mean, it won't stay on there forever because there's contaminants. So eventually it'll start breaking free whenever. But if you get this, if you get this floating right, um, I mean, you gotta, you gotta decontaminate and clean as clean as you want. This stuff will stick and stay on there forever. You'll never get it off. But your, your most pliable time, which is what I'm dreading, I'm kind of dreading this because I have to seam this. There's a way you seam that right here. You got to overlap the two pieces, cut down, and then there's a perfect trace of the cut, so they both butt up together seamlessly. But because this has been on here for so long, I don't know how this is going to cut. So this has passed a few days. I, I knew that. I should have just finished the gunnel. But I didn't actually know what I was going to do. So I choked there. So the, the whole, whole story about that is you want to you want to just do it all at once if you can. Or at least do the whole section at once. That way the turf can at least be pulled up a little bit. Don't press on it. Right. If you have the adhesive, which I strongly recommend you get the adhesive, it's really easy to work with and it's a very permanent bond once it's all set in place. Don't press on it. You can lightly lift it up if you didn't press on it and you can readjust it. And you can also make, make your overlapping cuts, which we did all kinds of overlapping cuts. An example of the overlapping cut would be right here, right there. You can kind of see that one. And there's some I did so well you can't see. There's a cut right there. Uh, over there oh yeah these see that I mean, you can only tell that because the the camo color is broken up on that straight line so you can tell that's the only reason you can tell otherwise you couldn't tell and it's like that over there too because the piece i just had to do that because the piece was just shy of an inch went one piece right down the core measured it out found a center line I actually drew the center line right here on the boat now you see that just drew it on there with a the marker because and then uh lined it right all the way down two pieces then once you get the full two pieces um straight down uh everything else just kind of falls like straight up in place just falls right in place and then i got a whole video like if people we got people cutting templates cardboard templates and stuff it's, it's completely useless to do i mean it's not useless it's just more work because really we you know you, you fill the seam you cut it out you pull it out same thing here you find the little groove put this in here cut it out cut it out and then you do the same thing. And then we got we have this all on YouTube. And we're going to have a really extensive video, especially a bunch of new master classes for, um, you know, how this is all going. And I also added a new compartment in here. This was not here last time. But I realized that I didn't really have anywhere, like, for my safety items. Because in Arizona, I don't know where there is everywhere else. But you need a flare, a little throat, a little throat throwing thing you know the floaty oh whatever it's called the little life preserver that you throw to people you need one of those you fire extinguisher flares and whistle and then it's really obviously very important to carry a medical bag like a safety first aid kit and i got like nowhere to put that really without jamming up my already jammed up storage i don't want to pile it in here so when the cop pulls me out i'm like rummaging through all my my terminal my wet stow gear and stuff so that's what that is for immediate the cops come and trying to harass me. I bust that right open. It's all right there, dude. Then you can go back on with your day. <sighs> plus, obviously, if anything happens, it's all in one location. And plus, it's a little step up. So the deck is not so invasive. You really could just kind of hop from the front deck, right to the back deck, back to the front. And go all over that deck. That's, what, that's the advantage of the tiller builds. You can do that. Consoles, not so much. But you can do that, totally do that here. 45 guys in the chat, guys. Let's see if we can get 45 likes. We're at almost 30. Do appreciate it. So let's talk about some other some other tax tactics. And then um let me so. So here we go. 
I, a lot of people don't do this, but just with expense, if extensive experience, I do. I turf the inside of the lids. Why do I do that? Because it dramatically decreases heat. And it, heat is a big problem where I live. I think heat's probably going to be a huge problem where everybody lives with all the nonsense happening in the world. But it's a big thing. It's a big thing. Obviously, we don't do it to the live well. And I'm not really... I did it into this one anyways, but just because I had it. It's the last little bit of the snow cam. Now, the only time where you can get away with cheap turf is actually in the compartments. That's not cheap. That's This is all hydro turf. But the only time you can get away with like cheap turf, like if you want to do that, you can go get on Amazon and find some cheap cut groove or some diamond plate or whatever you want to want to put in there. And you can shove it right in there. And uh, because it's not going to be constantly exposed to the sun or the elements or you stepping on it or, you know, so it'll be okay. But the top stuff, you definitely want a very high quality EVA foam that's going to last, you know, be resistant to UV destruction and all those things that kind of make HydroTurf great. And so that's why we have this here like that. Um, I just think it's really important. You can tell to the bare touch. You can tell, especially when you have the foamed in compartments. A lot of people foam the compartments and not the lid. And that's like, that's like the peanut butter without the jelly. It's like a, not a complete thing. You should foam the whole thing because it really double foaming on from the top and the bottom really does give an extra layer of insulation. You will, you can feel this bar here, which we're going to probably put a decal there. Can't turf that. It would, we could have, but it would look, I don't know. We didn't do it. I, for one, I don't have enough. And then, um, but you can feel, you can feel this bar. It's hot to the touch. You can feel the rest of it. And so these supports have to be here because these lids are so big, but it's okay. It's all right. Can you, did you guys all see that? I, I switched the camera around because I can flip it around like this, but I wasn't really sure you saw that, but it's, this is a, just a thing you can do. The thing you can do. So we do that here in the day boxes. Uh, Got to vacuum all that out. Good. Now we talked about all these. So we, we've been doing a series. It's pretty much a live build. We've been, we have been binge building this thing. And we've been talking about how everything's in here. Let me talk about this real quick. See this? Uh, I don't know if you can see this. See how that's like lower than everything? It's because I got this. Oh, I got one of these. Oh, oh, it's right here. Got one of these. Put it in here. Traced it. And then I went in there with one of those utility knives and I, I only cut through the groove. I didn't cut through the whole thing because you cut through the whole thing. It's a big problem. Why you want to do that? Because if you look at these, this is, a, this is like a, a standard lash. You see it has got that rubber seal. If you don't do this, you'll need to incorporate the rubber seal into this. Like if you cut all the way down to the hydro turf to make this completely flush, you still need the rubber seal because what this has is these little teeth. And all these all these cam lever latches are like this. They have these little teeth. The teeth do not grip into aluminum. It'll slip and slide everywhere. So you either need to use that rubber seal or, or do this, which actually works better than the rubber seal. Trust me. And then another thing is that another benefit of having the turf underneath is it kind of acts like a crush washer or a, a lock washer, because as you tighten this, like the foam squishes and it wants to expand back out. So it actually, it prevents vibrating loose of these because that's, you can have these, these are locking too, but if your boat's vibrating so much and you don't necessarily catch it, and because these do come loose with vibration, um, someone wants to steal and they could just twist that, they twist the whole lock. A lot of them will just twist it. This lock, if they don't know how, to, if they're not smart to break the lock, they can just with brute force twist that and mess with it and get it loose. But it's really actually very hard to do that with, with both hydro turf like that. It's, you, it's compressed like that. It's extremely hard to do that. Extremely hard to turn those teeth through the turf first off. And extremely hard to do it once it's bound on both ends. So if not that, at least some sort of rubber thing on the bottom, which you can't really use that O-ring because it's not meant for that. But something, it's, the cam lever latches are really nice, but they're, I swear they're the easiest thing to break into if you don't prepare for it. So it's a bigger reason why we're foaming all the compart. Oh, see, also hear that loud slam. Sorry if that's loud. Um, that's because we don't have a, we don't have door edge guard like we have here. See a door edge guard? See that? I'm gonna shut this one. 
See the difference? See the difference? This is the orange guard. That was a little bit. I kind of kind of slammed it. Oh, sorry. I kind of slammed that one. It can get loud, but let me just try this one real quick. Not making a good case for myself here, I guess. It's a little bit. I tell you, if you walk on it, if you're walking on this, it does cut down on, on the sound. And it is easier when you shut that. It's almost completely silent versus you get some little clang here on the same kind of pressure release. So it's just recommend you get door edge guard. We have it here. We have don't have it here. So, and then when I walk on this, you feel that? So your boat will shake and, and shudder, but the, it just it decreases vibration. It's a little just, it's just quieter. That's it. It's all it does is it's just a little bit quieter. It also looks nicer. I mean, if, if the hatch falls on your finger, then it will hurt less. Although I strut everything, so that never happens. And then again, like we have, this is a standard, I think maybe this might be a 30 pound strut. 150 in, 30 pound strut. So it's not that the hatches are so heavy, it's that the leverage, because the hatches extend this far, actually make the hatch real, real heavy for the pull point. So here, these are actually 40 pound, 200 end struts from like Amazon. And we have two of them, 80 pounds. Not because this hatch is much heavier than this one, but just because the sheer leverage of it expanding versus it having to pull it at that angle is the reason we, we had to really go tremendously up in shock pressure. And then here, here's a good example. So we butted it over here. We butted it over here. So it went flat like that and totally can do that. We can also do this leave an overhang. Now this is an obscenely large overhang. This is excessively a large overhang. Why did I do that? Because I'm gonna put LEDs in here. And I don't know if you ever like notice, but it, you're sitting down or walking around it, the LEDs will just flood your face and it's just like you can't turn away from it. When you have an overhang, you actually, and you're on top of the boat, not on the side of the boat looking into it. It actually cuts down that glare from the LEDs a lot. So you only really get the good use of the LEDs, which is only going to be to light up the cockpit. And then same thing with the gunnels, but those will all be RGB, which is why we held off on finishing the sides because we still got to run RGB and we probably should run that honestly first before we even try to run uh, the stupid turf just because I don't know to help. The only fail I had is I thought about it but I should have just like got thicker aluminum and welded that whole sidewall and just left those gunnels hollow. But I had all these ideas. They were going to hide my shallow water anchor spikes. That was loud. They were going to hide my shallow water anchor spikes. Now I gave that up and there were going to be a wire conduit for other things. And I was like, well, that's stupid. And so then they ended up just being hollow. But then by the time I like got to it, it was too late. By the time I realized, man, I should have just welded that. So I got thin gauge aluminum and riveted it. So it's fine, but it, you can see little waves, little stupid waves. It's just gonna look slightly stupid. It's more of an OCD thing. It doesn't, doesn't really affect the function, but it is like, it's there, whatever, whatever. I have to chase what down with the F-350? Oh, no, no one's racing on my, look. It's, it's kind of lawless out here. There's like side by sides and people going everywhere is whatever it is. Like Havasu is pretty, pretty loose. Like women will walk right in the grocery store and like pasties and a G string. Like nobody cares. It's alcohol everywhere. It's a sinner man's land. If, I don't do that shit. But like if you wanted to do those things, <laughs> they're here. So you just kind of just mind yourself. You can't yell at every person who speeds down my road. I, I would have no voice. Truly. They, call, they truly. What's your boat when you come? What? Are you going to bring your boat? Nate's supposed to try and finish his boat, too. I don't know if he's going to pull it off. He moves a little slow. We'll see. We'll see. Oh, yeah. We'll see, Nate. We'll see. Nate's an old perv. I'll tell you what. Anyway. <laughs> Anyways, uh, that's what we got going on. This is, again, our TB Nation camo dark. And we have TB Nation camo light, which still looks pretty freaking awesome. 
but this is like the first time I've ever actually seen it and obviously used it and put it on my boat. And it's friggin' great looking, I think. I think it, it came out really good. This is my cleanest run. And then we obviously splicing in the turf here. Splicing in the bump boards on, on both sides. So the co-angler and the, and the main front has one. Have a pretty generous deck that can fish two people, three if need be. The cockpit is just as big as it needs to be. Doesn't need to be bigger. Doesn't need to be smaller. We more or less solved all our problems for tackle and for accessories and for gear store, pretty much for everything, for battery store. We got live well, wet stove. The back is just big enough to fit a six gallon. Really needed a 12 gallon back there, but you start running out of room. I mean, a 17 foot boat probably could have put a 12 gallon back there and been okay. But I mean, this is 16 feet, but it's 16 feet of awesomeness. And we got this, these gunnel straight. And I just got to finish the rest of this. And then it really is just running the lights. Again, we're going to be running flashlights. Now, these are just straight cool lights. And so we'll probably be giving some of these away later. We had to make sure I use exactly what I need for the product before I give away things I don't, that I need. And uh, by the way, by the way, I did send all the giveaway stuff. So if you did win something, there was like six people that went, that had stuff coming to them, though, or five. And so those five people, you guys all got sent something today. It's all going to you. So just wait for it. It's going to be in the mail. All right, guys, what do you think? What do you guys think of, of all this? I think it came out pretty good. Obviously, I'm not, I'm only like 80% done, 90%, 80% done with the turf. And then after the turf, it really is just the rigging. I got to put on the jack plates. I got to make special shallow water anchor mounts like that flare out from the jack plate or next to the jack, they're going to flare out. They're not going to attach the jack plate. They're going to attach to the boat. They're going to flare out. And then, I mean, we're really, we're ready to mount the motor. I was supposed to try and mount the motor today. I was supposed to turf this because I didn't want to take it out just bare bones. And, you know, everybody could see the, the, the raw aluminum deck with a bunch of rivets through it. I didn't want it. I just wanted it to be turf so I could show it off that I just couldn't pull it off. Like it took forever. And so probably looking at Monday for the actual outboard to get on here, which would be good because by Monday I should have the boat more or less basically done. And I also got to update the registration, put decals on it. And the trailer, don't get me started on that stupid trailer. Those tires are dry rotted. I don't even know if they'll make it down the road. So they might, they could explode at any time. So a little sketch about those. And then we're gonna put a fold away hitch and, and this front, is excessively overbuilt and long for no reason. So we'll be getting rid of this. This front is just nonsense. We could probably make this whole thing right here and then have the stem stick out and have it fold here, right where the center, where it's like flush with the boat. And then we don't have a very long shank from the fold. So we don't have to worry about that. And it'll fit way better in the boat. I mean, I'm sorry, in the garage. Because see this like this is like a little three foot span right here, right close to my, my door. That's gonna go away when I have that outboard. I'm gonna need every little bit of room I can get to get this thing in here. I also gotta figure out exactly where my welder's gonna float. I got a brand new cart for the welder. I got that Vulcan large cart. I had that other big DIY cart, but it was too big. It was too big. It like it held everything, but it was too big. Remember it? It had to go. This thing's actually at least portable. I can move this thing without like struggling. So I'll probably end up floating around there, which is unfortunate. But everything that I can't stow anywhere good always ends up floating on that side of the garage. It's just it's just whatever it is. All right, guys. I hope Nate answered most of the questions. I hope he did. Um, yeah, sixty horse is gonna go on this boat. It's, it's rated max for a sixty horse. And so that's what it's going to get. I just think that's just like appropriate, right? Although the 60 horses of old are much lighter. I would think they're a lot lighter than the 60 horses of new, which are just fat and overbuilt in the four stroke curse. But uh, the power should be fairly the same. The distribution should be fairly the same. And then I did frame this boat a little bit heavier, more a little bit more robust in the front. We got all that. We got a lot of stuff in here. There's a lot of material on this boat. It's quite a bit. So... I think a 25 horse is still playing it, but not well. Um, and a 60 horse will put it at 30 to 35 at half throttle. 
at half throttle. And so we'll get really good efficient use out of a six gallon gas tank. And I should never have to full throttle that motor unless I got like a, a aluminum prop on it. I'm sorry, a stainless prop on it. And I'm really trying to hit 40. I'm trying to hit 40 on no tiller. Guess what I made? This. This was not on here last time either. Welded that right on there. Why? Because you need a grab handle or you'll die. There's a few times, and then we'll be dressing this up specifically. I got, I got some like handlebar wraps, like for bike wraps. I'm going to wrap this around so I can grip it. So if you grip a square, a square tube like that, it actually will hurt your hand. It, like hurt me right there holding it. So there's a few times where I almost got thrown from, from my other boat, which had the 60 on it initially. Something about a rogue wave grabbed, grabbed the skeg on the motor. You could feel it. It like pulled me. And I remember I had, a, I had a oh crap handle here. Like, so I just was holding it from here and I might still just add one there for, for like, for just, you know, safety or something. So I have two options. Um, so I just remembered if I wasn't holding on to that, I would have clearly been thrown over the boat going like 20 something through chop. And who knows what would have happened to the boat? Like, I mean, I had, I had the, I had the safety lanyard on, but I mean, in all those waves, what are you going to swim to your boat? No, you're going to die. So, like, it's, uh, you need this. I mean, if you look at all those mud boats, like the Prodigies and the Havocs of the world, they all have that little raised arm here that's, like, extended here. Obviously, we couldn't implement that in here because those boats are extremely basic and easy to build. Um, they're just built really tough to hit sandbars and hit rocks, go through the mud and, you know, put those giant mud motors on there. They're not really made for elegance or or for multi-purpose stuff like this. So they can just have random stuff like a big pole sticking out here and it doesn't really affect it. So I couldn't have that. So I had to put this here and um, I probably could have made it a little bit more elegant, but really it's just got one purpose. Like, help me not die. It's really all it's for. So I'm pretty excited. I think it'll be unique. I think it'll, it'll, it'll raise eyebrows. People will wonder what it is. They'll see that it's a tiller and they'll make fun of it, but then they'll see everything else. And I don't, I don't know. Get a lot of stares at the deck. I also get a lot of criticism and talking to like I'm five from old timers who come here, even though they, know, they don't know I'm local. It's like weird. I have a hard time being nicer. The older I get, the hard time I have being nicer to old people because I feel old myself. And I'm just like, who are you talking to? You can't talk to me that way. I'm old also. Like, there's just a point in time where you being old doesn't give you any more right over somebody who's like fairly old. Right? I don't know. That's how I feel about it. Anyways, I don't know. I'm just rambling now. All right, guys, this is a Saturday. Oh, sorry, it's the Friday. Hope to have this thing turfed and rigged tomorrow. Um, and the jack plate on possibly by tomorrow. And then the trailer by Sunday. Then Monday we can go get new tires on it and the motor. And Tuesday we can be on the water. Tuesday on the water. On the water demo. I don't know if I can go live on the water. It'd be pretty hard. We can try, but we'll see. We'll see. Be pretty good, guys. Um, thank you much. I'm going to go ahead and head out of here and let you guys get on with your weekend. We'll do giveaways um, when this boat's completely done. And I'm here to show you everything that's done because everything's clearly not done yet. I'll let you guys know. All right? We'll have some things out here lined up like, like they were last time. All right, guys. Talk to you later. I'll see you.